Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody has had a good day up until this point. Uh, for me, it's been extremely busy. It's been a busy week. Uh, I'm going to be as succinct as I possibly can here because there's so much I still need to get done. But there's something I definitely want to address. Before I do, I have to remind you that we are in the middle of a fundraiser for the work we do at the Odyssey Project with Black Men Lead, uh, a rite of passage initiative, and wraparound services that service uh, African American males uh, from the ages of 4 to 30 and beyond in many instances. Right now we're helping a 52-year-old male and his 14-year-old son. Uh, we need your support to do the work we do to improve the quality of men that we are releasing into our communities uh, that are growing up and what they're becoming, um, and so much more. Uh, my wife's work with Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, uh, which I think is immensely important, helping young females who are dealing with tragedies and trauma uh, from childhood and beyond. We have so much that we are doing that needs support. Uh, we are asking that you do that. I have a real quick question that I want everyone to ponder, and I'm going to leave you with some ideas. And I want you to sort of ponder this, because we talk about black empowerment uh, as, it, as if it is truly uh, a goal of ours, uh, as if we are prepared to really sit down and invest ourselves in it. And there's this question that uh, lingers when I look at how things are going. And, and um, I saw a post that just really made it pop to me today and it made me say, okay, now's the time to address it. And the question is really simple. Why do we have to demand to be valued? Let me say that again. Why do we have to demand to be valued uh, as individuals, as families and as a race? Why are we consistently put in a position where we feel the need to tell others to value us? Whether it's um, in a misplaced investment in an organization like Black Lives Matter, which we put to the side and we look at the real, the yearning uh, to tell somebody we matter. Why is it that we are consistently in a place where we are having to tell people that we matter. Why do we have uh, ourselves or the need to insist that people acknowledge or recognize how valuable we are? And these are the things I want you to ponder. Normally, if you're telling someone to value you or you're insisting that someone or multiple people or a job or a entity or what a country or a nation value you. It's normally because you have made a decision to keep yourself in the presence of people who don't value you. And so the question then becomes, do you value yourself? One of the things we teach at Black Men Lead and Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters is the importance of understanding who you are and the importance of knowing what you're worth and then governing yourself accordingly. One of the things that I've always said uh, when I see these guys out here playing with the emotions of our women by telling them what they should and should not accept, the truth of the matter is when you truly invest in our women, when you truly invest in our young girls, when you truly invest in them the way that they should be from young girls, I mean young babies, and you let them know who they are and you treat them the way they're supposed to be treated and you treat their mothers the way they're supposed to be treated and you handle them with the, with the care and the concern and the love they're supposed to be and they truly get a sense of who they are, they have an identity and in that identity is embedded their worth and because they know their worth, you don't have to tell them what they don't need to accept they know it so when people are accepting certain treatment when people are accepting 
certain behavior, when people are not being valued, but yet still within the environment in which they're not being valued, and literally to the point of begging them, someone to value them, it's because they haven't truly discovered who they are. They haven't truly understood at the depths and the nature of self who they are. Because once you know yourself, once you know who you are, same thing when we're teaching little boys at Black Men League, when you teach them that there's a priest inside of them, there's a prophet inside of them, there's a provider inside of them, there's a protector inside of them, that's someone who lifts and promotes those within their family inside of them. When you tell them they're important to the community, when you tell them they have a role in a place that the community cannot excel or move forward without them, when you let them know that they are not just criminals, uh, future criminals, when you let them know that they have a place and that that place is, is, is a place where they have power and they have strength and they can do exceptional and extraordinary things. They tend to know their worth and they tend not to succumb to the suggestion of criminality. They tend not to come to the suggestion of violence and, 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 and un uncontrolled emotion. They tend to know who they are. They tend to settle themselves into their purpose and their goals and their destiny. They tend to be behave better. It's proven. I've done the studies for years. That's why I created Black Men Lee. But here's the thing. We are a people that spend far too much time demanding that someone respect and value us. And what we have to start understanding is when something isn't what it should be, you have to release it. When something isn't governing or behaving in a way that is supportive of your best interest. You have to release it. You have to push it away. You have to find a space where you thrive. You have to find a space that can appreciate you. You have to find a space that can love you. Those are the things that you have to do. So in essence, what we've got to start to look at is who we are as a people, who we are. And yes, we've been bruised. Yes, we've been beat up. Yes, we've been torn. Yes, we've been tired. Uh, we've been attacked. Yes, we have suffered tremendously, but we're still standing. We have accomplished some extraordinary things under the most testing and trying of situations. We have proven that we are remarkable people, but we've got to love ourselves enough to put ourselves in the right place. In the right place is not trusting a system that was built to destroy us and asking it to respect us. It cannot respect us because it sees us as the enemy. It sees us as a threat. It sees us as something that will disrupt its natural movement, rotation, and momentum. And we have to understand that our power is in and of ourselves. We're going to have to stand together. We're going to have to love ourselves so that we can love one another. We're going to have to see the value in our ourselves so that we can see the value in one another. We're going to have to respect that value, honor that value, and live to increase that value. And we need to do that. Why? Because we are the ones that's going to embed that value or inculcate that value into the psyche of our young kids. And if we can't do that, they're going to grow up seeking the approbation and approval of the very ones who want to destroy them. That's why we have so many kids trying to be something other than who they are. So many, so many uh, kids trying to be and act and behave in ways that is not conducive to their natural strength and power. And they will love that because that gives a subjugated representation of who they are and whatever is valuable of them is sucked out without any appreciation of the value. They take us and use us to enrich themselves all the time and never ever really truly acknowledge the value that they know is there. They, you don't have to convince them that it's there. They know. They're just not going to acknowledge it because in acknowledging it, they empower you. They don't want to empower you. They want you to seek and need them to approve of who you are. And the thing is, you don't need their approval. So here's my challenge. My challenge is that we stand up and we start to learn who we are. We need to study. We need to teach. We need to support the things mm. that build us up. We need to support the things that give us an opportunity to win. We need to be behind those things. We need to be behind one another. We need to personally look for ways to enrich ourselves in understanding who we are so that we don't have to beg anybody to acknowledge our value. We don't have to demand anybody acknowledge our value. We simply move towards those who do and away from those who don't. That's where we've got to be. It's time to stop 
begging and insisting that others acknowledge our value. It's time for us to start valuing ourselves. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here. It's just something I had to touch on. Again, show your love and support for the work we are doing in our organization. The link is in the description box. And if you don't want to use the link, you can always use the organization's Cash App handle, which is also in the uh, description box. Again, one love. We've got so much work to do. Nobody's going to do it for us, so we're going to have to do it ourselves. That's my challenge. On that note, I'm out of here.